Hello everyone, it's that time again. Featured Teachers, our monthly webinar series uh, from the American Teacher Institute. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Fluency MC, also known as Jason R. Levine, and I have the great pleasure and privilege <laughs> to be here uh, every month with you to present uh, a teacher in English language teaching. Uh, often they do a lot more than just uh, teach English, but in the uh, sphere of English language teaching, someone who has inspired other teachers and learners and has uh, been equally inspired uh, by teachers and learners, that's what it's all about. And uh, I'm really excited because the person we are featuring for the month of June excuse me, May, I'm getting ahead of myself, <laughs> May uh, 2022 is someone I've been uh, in contact with and friends with for a long time now. He's greatly inspired me, uh, definitely made me a more inspiring teacher. Uh, his name is Kip Boan. He's uh, uh, speaking of uh, known as what did I say? Was it better known as uh, also oh, known as, he, is, <laughs> he is better known as uh, Kip Yellow Jacket, and uh, he's known for the virtual world Vertlantis that he wow he's been building for a while, and he's going to talk to about uh, talk to us about that. It's exciting at a time where uh, the metaverse is a buzzword uh, all over the world. This is an individual who has known all about this uh, metaverse for uh, since since it uh, began, which is way before uh, perhaps you believe it has it, it began. Uh, and uh, more to the point, has always looked at it as a way to uh had do innovative uh teaching and learning uh around the world so we're going to meet him in in just a moment uh thanks to all of you who are here live those of you who are watching of uh, the recording thanks for supporting uh american tiso institute and our webinar series featured teachers okay kip yellow jacket kip boang welcome to featured teachers thanks so much for joining us today thanks man nice to be here jace really appreciate the the time and the opportunity well, uh, it's just it's just to me uh, as exciting as it could be because even though I've followed you and and for so long and I've seen what you've done, I've never really had a breakdown of what you've been working on, and it's interesting because uh, there have been some things you've been doing for so, so long, and then at the same time, recently technology mm -hmm. has uh, you know advanced in a way that I believe is making it even more interesting and exciting. So I, I'm really, I'm really happy you're here and uh, can't wait to, to talk to you and see, see what you've been up to. Okay. Awesome. And can I go ahead and share my screen? Is that okay? Please. Yeah, awesome. go ahead. Okay. Let's, let's dive right in. Okay. Well, I don't have any, uh, you know, concrete plan in terms of where the discussion should go. So feel free to lead me, Jason. Um, okay. There's so much to talk about really. We could spend hours as you know, uh, as we've talked about before. Um, I've uh, just got a little bit of uh, snapshots from, from the history of Atlantis uh, in front of us at the moment on the screen. And uh, you're absolutely right. So we're, we're sort of at, at a point in time, I think, when um, uh, virtual reality and multi this idea of metaverse is sort of being revisited. You know, what is it? And uh, the original idea, I think, of the metaverse dates back to like 2003 um, uh, with, with a book, um, mm -hmm. Snow Crash, I think it's called. And um, uh, I joined actually in 2006. I got active in Second Life. My wife and I were working. Um, I should probably make clear that my wife and I, we, we are also affiliated with the Oxford School for English. So uh, we have this school in Germany and Austria. And so at the time, we were working on uh, a 2D uh, storytelling platform. And I, got, I, I immediately got interested in Second Life because I looked at that and I was like, wow, we, we could uh, potentially add this on to the uh, 2D storytelling platform. So you could have the advantage of working with a learning management system like Moodle, you know, and mm. having people, uh, you know, making use of storytelling and whatnot, and then potentially have people go from a uh, 2D uh, storytelling experience uh, into a 3D environment. And, so and what, 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 yeah. year was, what year was this? I think you said it, but I just want to make sure everyone's Late followed. 2006, yeah. So basically, Late 2006. I remember 2006, where it was like the idea of a learning management system to me, I could see the advantages of it, but it seemed so boring. Uh, yeah, so I right, think you right, you right. were lucky because you somehow had the advantage of of, of finding out about this. I mean, I remember Second Life, but never putting it, uh, never thinking about it as a way to you know for education 
to right. work in an education uh, uh, setting. So, so right. why? What happened? Was there like an aha moment where you were just like, "Oh, th this is the way that it's going to work in the future." Well, you know, at that time, we, we were really limited in Second Life, so we didn't have uh, in-world voice. We had to supplement it with uh, things like um, uh, TeamSpeak or Skype even uh, to try to bring voice uh, into the, the virtual environment. Um, but as far as the, the learning management system is concerned, you know, uh, one of the things that, that immediately became clear was we could try to um, connect objects uh, within the virtual environment to a learning management system, so quiz objects, mm. for example. Um, this was something that was experimented with. Uh, it's not something we really got into big time. Um, but um, there was another project called Sloodle, which tried to make use of Second Life and Moodle, um, and, and they had some success for several years. Um, myself, I got involved with a, a programmer friend, and we worked on Clairline, and, and of course, he, he, he being a programmer, did most of the programming work, but he basically, uh, it was a proof of concept kind of a thing, so we tried mm -hmm. to prove that, that this particular learning management system could also be integrated with uh, Second Life. And so, yeah, we, we did things like that, um, yeah, way back then, probably around 2007, 2008. Great. And was it was it difficult for you to kind of convince people that this was something like to bring people on and, and do it? Was it just people that were really into Second Life or into computers and, and coding or things like that? Or was was it was it easy to get people to figure out uh, just, you know, your, your average person that wanted to learn a language? Right. Well, I think uh, I know that for Atlantis, um, uh, right around 2008, I think we could say that, that Second Life, 2008, 2009, uh, experienced a kind of peak in terms of like interest and activity. So we really benefited from, from that because uh, language uh, educators and all kinds of educators came into the uh, virtual environment to try to see, um, you know, how they could make use of the environment for language instruction. And um, yeah, what, what we're trying to do now is once again, position ourselves for such an onboarding of language educators. Mm, mm. So we sort of want to rekindle the sense of community that we had going uh, uh, way back then. We still have, you know, a sense of community now, but it's kind of, you know, quiet, you know, so we need some new faces, yeah. need some fresh blood, you know. Yeah. And uh, now with this new new hype of the, of the metaverse and whatnot, we think we can um, basically have a, have a sort of a comeback and, and a reboot of Atlantis and, and get people active again. I, I am absolutely sure that's going to happen but i'm really curious what what happened back then 2008 2009 like you said there was a peak what why did it drop off like what what happened yeah complicated all kinds of reasons and you know not not specific to verklantis but more specific to second life and the nature of second life perhaps there is a learning curve and uh that, that's another thing that sort of excites me about where we are now because there are all kinds of other platforms that we're planning to make use of so verklantis will, will no longer be it really hasn't for the longest time now. It, it will no longer be, and it hasn't uh, been for the longest time, uh, only about Second Life. So we've been active in other platforms uh, as mm. well, mm -hmm. uh, such as Kitely and, and OpenSim, and, uh, and now with these browser-based worlds, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, such as Frame VR and Spatial and whatnot, uh, we have potential to basically bring educators together and um, work together to, to kind of help you know, support each other to uh, upskill each other and, and, and help, you know, help each other make use of these different environments. So and exciting. So, so exciting. Yeah. So it, it, I, I'm sure for a, a period in the middle there, it was kind of like, oh, like there was this missed opportunity perhaps. And then suddenly it's like, wait a second. It was just about sort of an evolution. Um, here you are now and you're feeling optimistic. It's, it's yeah. super yeah. exciting. And, and, you know, I reached out to you when I, when I saw these things changing, I'm like, oh my right. God, Kip, you know, you are this pioneer. Like, I think, I think the time has come <laughs> to get into, to, to get yeah. people here. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much on the past. I just think that's, a, it's so interesting, sure. but I yeah. would love you to, to uh, take us now into what you're saying. Like there are different platforms, the web-based ones that are browser-based right. that are easier for everybody to, to participate in. Right. So, yeah, please continue. Right. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, these browser-based worlds are, are incredible, I think, uh, for onboarding or, or basically introducing uh, educators to virtual reality and, and, what, and how they can be used. And so I'm really excited about platforms such as uh, FrameVR, which is what we're looking at at the moment. And this is just, you know, one particular environment in FrameVR. So I can switch over to another one right now to show you how different uh, it can look, right? This is one I'm actually working on, uh, which involves the Oxford School for English. Um, but uh, yeah, these browser-based worlds do not uh, 
involve any kind of a download. So uh, they're super easy to use. There, mm. There's a little bit of a, a learning curve. You have to learn how to navigate, but that's very basic, you know, with your arrow keys or the WASD, for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, what, what I'm interested in doing is trying to connect with other like-minded educators to show them how to use these platforms, how to even create their own environments and whatnot. Uh, so our goal at Verglantis is not to bring people and to, you know, sort of isolate people in certain environments, mm. but to instead show them how they can make their own environments. Mm. And, and, then, and then maybe there's um, enough win-win that we can link these environments. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of multiverse uh, connecting different types of virtual environments and making use of them in pedagogical ways. And what if I'm a teacher and I'm like, look, I love the idea of making my own environment, just like I love the idea of making my own materials, blogging, everything else, but I don't necessarily have the time. Or yeah. you know, can 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 I, you know, get in on one of these virtual worlds? Can I, you know, use something that's already kind of pre-made for me? Absolutely. And uh, the, the cool thing is, is that there are various entry points, you know, so uh, whether it's uh, Second Life that, that, that piques your interest and, and gets, you know, acts as a sort of entry point, uh, or um, Kitely, for example, which is where I'm at here, mm. um, or, or one of these browser-based uh, worlds such as FrameVR or, or Spatial, um, uh, all of these environments um, have, have the pedagogical potential, of course, and the, the ultimate aim is to... to um, uh, basically reignite or rekindle the, this community of practice that we had going for so many years. I mean, I, I've worked with all kinds of incredible um, educators uh, from, from various countries. Our, the nature of Atlantis is very, you know, multicultural, very uh, multinational, multilingual, mm. because it, um, initially our focus, um, and even still, our primary focus is language learning and language instruction. So that means we attract all kinds of educators and learners from, from various countries. Um, and my, my, we can basically help each other to, um, to upskill and to uh, quickly, um, yeah, um, conquer any kind of learning curve that there might be, you know? Yeah, I'm just smiling because I'm just looking up and seeing, like, the, the linking words and the adverbs over there. I'm yeah, like, yeah <laughs> this is, But, you know, this, this is, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know right. when I, fir I first had this, uh, you know, my aha moment was when I was already so convinced that the lexical approach and chunking and you know collocations was was the way uh, to teach and, and and learn a language but then how am I, how can students get enough exposure to them you know and yeah. then having this moment where it was like oh like you know my students could remember like commercial right collocations from billboards and from right. uh, magazines and from television it's like sure. <laughs> how can we do it so they can just you know see them the way they see them and hear yeah. them and, and you know it's you know it's like are we going to put signs in the classroom so then it was like okay the internet comes along and, and things develop more <laughs> and it's like okay i'm making these songs and these videos that's great but this <laughs> you know, imagine if like, you can just have them change. You know, have those have those chunks just appear. It's just it's it's wow. It's so so. Well, you can you can. I mean, yeah. e even in this particular environment, um, they have what are called um, um, scenes, and so so what you're seeing right now could totally be switched out uh, instantaneously, and you could see new objects uh, automatically. So cool. Right. So incredible potential. I mean, what what you're looking at now is a scene for the Matura examination in Austria, which is where I'm at. And so it, it's like the final uh, school leaving exam and, uh, for, for English. And so mm. that's what this, the focus of this middle, middle section is right now. Um, over here, I'm working on uh, basically an info area for the Oxford School. Um, and over here, um, we'll basically connect uh, Verglantis and have uh, uh, general information about Verglantis and uh, teleport links and different ways of like going to other places from here. And this is just a starting point, really, Jason. I mean, there's so many possibilities. It's incredible yeah uh, it's it's just it's aesthetically so so pleasing like it's just it feels so relaxed um yeah just, just having you kind of taking me around here um you know i do you feel uh as i feel that it's really just a matter of uh, you know, people can look at this and think that's great, but why? Well, I, I don't understand it. Whether you call it a learning curve or whatever, we can go back and look at you know just social media and navigating. You know how to use Facebook or how you know. Uh, it, isn't it just a matter of time, really? Right? Um, yeah, investment. Sure, get used sure. to it, and and it shouldn't be something to stress people out. Uh, it should be something that's like it's just coming. You know, just like other yeah. stuff comes. You know. Yeah, and I think it's, um, you know, that, that learning curve can be quickly um, overcome by, by having others who help you, right? 
Um, so it, it really helps to, to be able to come into a, an environment, especially one that has a, more, a steeper learning curve like Second mm. Life, mm -hmm. and you know, to be able to ask questions and, and get answers to those questions. And uh, early on when I joined Second Life, just to go back in, into history a little bit, I, I noticed that there were certain people that were like information hoarders, you know, so people who kind of like learned how to do things and then didn't want to share that knowledge. And I sort of wanted to, to for, for Bert Glantis to position itself as the opposite of that, right? So to, to, to be very open with ideas, everything's being shared, mm, um, mm. and all, all about trying to achieve win-win. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'm there. curious, do you, do you feel that same vibe now, or is it different? I mean, do you feel people are still trying to sort of keep things away from other people who are covening information? Not necessarily. No, I, I think there is a lot more sharing going on nowadays, uh, Jason. Um, but that's also from my, my own personal experience. I, mm -hmm. I know a lot more experience in Second Life, and I, I don't necessarily go looking for you know, others to show me how to uh, do some of the basics, for example. Right? Yeah, yeah, um, okay. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I see, I see. But er, early on, I wanted to look over somebody's shoulder, you know, to kind of see where they were and how they were doing the, the, the incredible things they were doing. And um, I, I think it helps to have, uh, um, yeah, people who can basically um, help in such a way in, in all of these environments, you know? I just have to say before I forget, uh, when when I when we I talked to American Tesla Institute uh, about about bringing you and 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 featuring Verlantis and everything you're doing, and he uh, the guy JP uh, who's in charge, he looked. He's like, wow, you know, I think we did an event in Verlantis years ago. So I did a search and I saw American Tesla Institute. It was like 2009. <laughs> So right. was was in Verlanda. So how cool is that? We're talking uh, about J Jason. Like, yeah, check this out. I think I have an I image of you somewhere. Um, well, there's uh, that from, too. But even earlier yeah, than me, yeah, I think it was like 13 years because I wasn't connected with you in, in, in right. 2008 or nine. I mean, it was just right. amazing uh, that you know. Uh, again, it, like, it, it really we makes this where. Oh yeah! Hey, <laughs> can you send that to me? I want to do like a flashback Friday with that tomorrow. Sure thing. Like that was 2013, right? There. Yeah, that's 13. No, it was yeah. 2009, if I'm not mistaken, that American Tesla Institute hooked up with you, and that's just yeah, so amazing. I mean, it could be this kind of like weird, you know, kind of uh, depressing thing if it weren't for the fact that things are coming, not even just coming back. I think in history will show us it's, it's just more about a, a, a continuum. You know, it was just it was just about where, when and where this was all going to, you know, really start to to come together. And, and right. I, yeah. Uh, and it's just it's just so exciting and so wonderful that that you are here and, and others like you who, you know, from the beginning had a vision uh, of how it could help uh, people teach and learn languages. So right. to that to that point, teaching and learning languages, can you, can you talk about, uh, you know, where, where you see things going with, with Verlantis and uh, so teachers who are watching, because that's our, our main, our main audience, like, you know, what, what should they know uh, about what can happen in a, in a virtual world like this? Sure. Well, one of the things I'm thinking about doing in, in terms of trying to help um, stimulate community again, because that's ultimately where it's at. We, we need activity. Uh, we, we need uh, like, you know, minded people with common interests coming together uh, to share ideas and, and support, etc. cetera. Mm. And one of the things I, I would like to bring back with this uh, reboot of Atlantis is the, the launch room concept, uh, which was a very simple uh, idea way back, um, in, um, yeah, a long time ago. Uh, that, this idea of basically provide, providing a kind of private space for an educator to act as a kind of meeting point for, you know, with, with, the, with one's students, for example, and uh, the placing of quiz objects or different types of uh, teaching objects um, and whatnot. And that, that seemed to really, uh, I think that was one of the reasons why, why Verklantis grew uh, like it did initially, uh, because we, we basically had an entire sim full of launch rooms. So individual spaces for teachers to come in and claim as their own, uh, mm -hmm. at least in terms of, uh, you know, making, individual use of it. And uh, we're planning on doing the same thing with uh, um, within Second Life, also within Kitely. Um, mm -hmm. uh, these uh, will have um, also classroom-like environments, such as, I mean, this is just a, uh, this is actually a very old uh, classroom environment, but, but you can imagine something like this. I'm using this as a starting point at the moment, but we will be making our own custom uh, sims again and custom um, learning environments. 
Um, but imagine, just, just as an example, being able to come in and claim the space as yours as an educator and mm -hmm. then, you know, place your things, uh, decorate as, as you wish and sort of use it as your meeting point. Yeah. Um, so things like that will be provided. Um, uh, even entire uh, sims or regions, uh, if that says anything to you, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you know what I mean by that? I do. Okay. I so 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 if I'm let, let's say I'm a, I'm a teacher if I see yeah. something like that classroom environment am I thinking yeah. this is a, a place where I would meet students that I don't meet in person so we're able to kind of meet here or this is somewhere I can take my you know physical class to do something or or is it both both really I think it's probably ideal for students uh, teachers who already have their students you know because that's half the battle you know uh, get f connecting with people uh, explaining what you have to offer and then getting everybody to connect at, a, at the same time there's a lot of logistics involved in all of that so if you already have a, a group of students that, that you work with online or offline mm. uh, then that that's probably the, the ideal scenario uh, but you can of course uh, go and, and market yourself online and try to uh, attract students, you know, to wherever you are with your activities. So what, what would an example be of something that, you know, uh, couldn't be done in person, even if you have a great group and great facilities, um, what, what could you do in, in an environment like this that you wouldn't sure. be able to do? Sure. Something like this is an example. So, uh, this is something I often show people. There's a little bit of a wow effect. So I can, this is an old scene once again. Um, but I can, just to demonstrate, I can mm -hmm. quickly, you know, clear environments or, uh, uh, you know, res or, or make appear new environments in, in, in different um, uh, spaces. So right now we had a cinema. Now we have an office, for example. Mm. And you have, you have the ability to make your own custom uh, environments as well. This is what's called a hollow deck. Uh, there's tremendous potential with hollow decks because you can not only res or make appear objects within a confined space, but really sim wide or region wide, which means everywhere, right? Just to zoom out, if I wanted objects to, um, let me quickly increase the, uh, what you see. Um, there we go. So if I wanted objects to, oops, do that again. Okay. To appear, for example, on that, that distant island right there uh, from, from a holodeck object, which is located here, um, I could do that, right? So I could make mm. quiz objects or quest objects, things like that uh, you cannot easily do in a physical classroom. Mm. Um, mm. Also, the, the ability to demonstrate certain types of um, vocabulary even. Like if you try to tell somebody what a parachute is, you can explain it, right? You can, you can sort of talk about it, but you can, you can, you know, if you can show it, if you can demonstrate it in some way or even allow the student to put the parachute on it and jump with it, then you have that connection, you know, that, that word association mm. with, with an experience, which I think is it's part of experiential learning, right? Well, this is huge, and it's funny because uh, I have an example, um, you know, where I was in a, a classroom not too long ago and a student asked, we were talking about a schedule and is a schedule yeah. a physical thing or not? And I happen to have like, you know, my, my physical schedule uh, in, you know, paper, paper-based schedule in my mm -hmm. bag. So I took it out and it's kind of like, oh, they can see it, you know? So in person learning has that advantage. If you look at like, you know, uh, very old, uh, distance learning. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're here with me. But then if you consider, if that student was asking, you know, what is a frying pan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't have a frying pan with me. So, right. you know, uh, this is why I, I believe very strongly that, in, you know, when history looks back at, at, at what's going to happen very soon, I think it's, it's going to be much more, uh, real to teach in an environment like this than it would in a, in a physical space where you'd be so limited to what, sure. what reality you can share. Right? Sure. Uh, and, and I think, um, wow, if we can make, uh, you know, IRL uh, real life relationships with students and then yes. take them places where there's no limit to answers to their questions, visual associations, word associations, experiences where they're going to remember. There, right. there, there's no way we're going to ever think that it was more real to be just in a physical classroom as far as right. language teaching and learning. Right. Yeah, right. and we don't have to abandon the physical classroom, right? And I don't think we should abandon things like books and, you know, old school uh, learning technology. I think 
I think there's a place for all these things. And mm. uh, I think ideally we should make use of everything in some way. Yes. You know, so, so that learning is pervasive and happens everywhere in all kinds of ways. Yes, um, yes, for sure. So, so um, if I'm a teacher watching this, and I think this is really amazing, but it's kind of still hard for me to get my head around, yeah. like, okay, uh, I've got a group, we're going to go somewhere and, 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 and have a lesson. Is, is there anything that you, you want to explain uh, as far as just how, how it begins? Um, like, you know, uh, where, where would they group people start, uh, this sort of thing? I mean, I guess it depends on the platform. Yeah. Well, because we're in the process of really, um, reconceptualizing things at the moment and, and uh, uh, rebooting things as, as said before, uh, lots of things are, are work in progress, but to be honest with mm. you, Jason, I, I like that because, uh, that, that means that, that when, when other people join us, a lot of things will be very, uh, new. And so they, People joining us now in terms of like uh, joining the community and deciding to take part in things uh, will be able to help sort of uh, build things at the same time, mm. uh, their own projects, their own mm. environments, but they'll also be able to see that the, the, the new um, Verglantis, so to speak, uh, take shape and, and form right. uh, because there is lots, lots to do, um, but that, that involves learning, right? So um, that, that's a good thing, I think. It gives us something yeah. to talk about, gives us something to collaborate on and et cetera. And what I would love, and I hope I hope you're thinking about, um, is some kind of you know kind of open house when you're ready, you know, where yeah. people can just go and 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 you're showing people around, um, you know, that would be fantastic mm -hmm. uh, for for teachers. Sure, sure. At at the moment, you know, when when you go to vertlantis.com, you land on my contact page or my contact site. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's simply because I've taken the Verklantis website offline for the time being. I'm working mm -hmm. on it right now. It will eventually be back online, uh, but people do have my contact information uh, mm -hmm. if they have questions in the meantime. Great. But very soon, uh, Verklantis.com will have all the information that everybody needs in terms of what we are, how they can participate, etc. Fantastic. Fantastic. So so what, what are you ex most excited about now if you compare what's going on now with what you were doing you know, uh, 13 years ago, like what, what's, what's, what, what's, what's better or exciting to you? So many things, but I think, um, one, one thing is, uh, something we've kind of already talked about this, the, the fact that we have these browser based, uh, uh worlds now really yeah, but helps. Tell us more, but tell us more about yeah. that. And what is, what's so different about a browser based world? Well, you don't have to download anything, right? So, uh, to, to join frame, you, you go to framevr.io. And uh, it, it's as quick as uh, entering your login information. You can even join as a guest. So you can skip a, uh, the, the sign-up process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just jump right in as a guest if you want to. Um, so cool. That, that's very, very powerful because what, what we can do is use environments like this to then further explain and, and demonstrate other virtual environments which have a higher learning curve. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we can use the brow browser-based worlds to sort of... Uh, act as stepping stones mm -hmm. um, to these other more, more complex worlds. So great. So great. Yeah. So I, I kind of see like a, like, like a nexus of, of things forming around Verklantis. So uh, we, that's one thing that really excites me. The idea of not, not sort of exclusively focusing on, on second life, but really mm -hmm. branching out and um, yeah, becoming more of a multiverse kind of a community. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and, and and Andrew, shout out to Andrew in the Edu Metaverse. Uh, you like what he's doing? It's yeah, incredible. yeah, incredible, definitely. Yeah. yeah, shout out to him. He's 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 very inspiring. I've looked at his work. Uh, I need to revisit what what he's uh, what he's doing because he's he's constantly creating new things. You know, he's <laughs> very uh, very efficient with his time. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, when I, yeah. I as you know, when I when I uh, met him, I was like, oh my god, I got to talk to Kip immediately because this right, is right. Gonna say, you guys are doing the same <laughs> same kind of thing yeah yeah right right is, is there is there anything particular just thinking about you know An andrew's uh focuses sort of just you know general subjects for young learners you know math uh, science things like that yeah is there anything particular to language teaching and learning uh, it doesn't have to be just English language teaching and learning, although, you know, our audience is mainly English language teachers that you'd want to focus on at this point, like to tell us about, since that is, you know, you have that expertise, you, that, that that's your, your background. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I would say, you know, often when I, when I teach uh, 
online or in so-called real life, I, I tell, I ask students the following question. Um, so when you, when you think about language, when you, when I say the following language is everywhere, what, what do you think I mean? And I, I of course get all kinds of responses to that. And, and the answer that I'm looking for is, is, is the fact that language is uh, everywhere. It's associated with everything that we see, right? So every object has some kind of uh, language associated with it and not just a noun or an adjective, but mm. you know, a myriad of, of associations, right? Um, yes. Um, and uh, so virtual environments, in my opinion, um, lend themselves very well to language learning because you have not only that, that visual association with all kinds of vocabulary, uh, but you also have the ability to ex sort of experience, have direct experience with with that um, vocabulary, you know. So, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's hard to explain a little bit, but, you know. No, but I that's huge. Only, yeah, I mean, yeah, what, yeah. what it makes me think yeah. of is just the, the effort that textbooks make. <laughs> if you look at language mm -hmm. learning compared mm -hmm. to other areas, just the efforts textbooks have to make to try yeah. to, you know, get things more visual for learners it's it's not yeah. that you don't learn in different ways i mean we, we know now language styles uh, learning styles is kind of all together um but we know visual uh is 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 the is the biggest one probably and the visual uh, experience that's visual not just looking at a, a two-dimensional sure. picture so you know um you can go back and see all these creative efforts publishers have made right with books to <laughs> cd-roms mm -hmm. or this kind of game or this kind of this or this kind of that so i mean it's, it's not that it's not important in every subject to learn something but, right you know uh this is you know language learning and unless you're learning it to you know, just be uh, uh, somebody who studies the subject um, and right. researches it. You, it's it's a skill, you know. Right. Uh, and it's not that math isn't a skill or physics isn't a skill or or history isn't a skill, but it it, it they really aren't <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in the sense the sense that a language is language is more on the side of like you know learning to dance or or play the piano or play basketball. Right. It has to be something that's done. Uh, experientially and through repetitive practice and that doesn't sure. work very well with a textbook and and you know right. an audio an audio file right and it's ideally very social and uh, mm. I, i've always mm. i've always found it incredible you know we can of course do this anywhere online but the fact that we can bring people together from various countries and cultures and backgrounds uh you know that that's always impressed me um you know i i sort of i'm i'm a bit older now 46 and when i started you know language learning it was old school, you know, I had uh, uh, CDs and textbooks and uh, that was basically it, right? I made yeah. some video cassettes, you know, <laughs> along the way. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, uh, nowadays it's like, I, I often say it's the golden age of learning if we could just realize mm. it, you know, because there's, there's so many possibilities. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the golden age of learning, because um, I'm, yeah. I'm involved right now uh, uh, with, with something, with a mobile app that I'm going to talk to you, by the way, about very soon um mm -hmm. where do you see things going in terms of mobile like it's great if you can you know be in front of a computer uh desktop if you have the means to do that and uh to to be in these virtual worlds do you do you feel like uh on a mobile device it could have the same uh you could have the same experience or at least a similar experience well some of these uh, uh browser-based um, platforms can work on the phone um, maybe not as well as on, on the desktop in terms of experience, but uh, uh, yeah, platforms like Second Life and Kitely are, are just too too system intensive mm. to to be uh, to be on, on a phone. But a lot of people want that, so there, there is push for for such a thing. I, I personally think you do need a desktop computer at this point for for a truly immersive kind of experience. That said, you know, augmented reality and phones, you know, uh, there's incredible um, um, innovation coming from from that as well. And I'm, I'm a big fan of app-based learning. And I, I like the idea of not only focusing on virtual environments, you know, but trying to integrate things and, and incorporate things like yeah. uh, other, other um, I can quickly show you, um, like, uh, let me go somewhere, back to the Oxford School one. Um, so here in this frame, I'm using a tool called Genially, which I, I think is based in France or Spain, uh, the company. And um, I really like what you're able to do with Genealys. And let me just let this load a little bit. Mm -hmm. Seems to want to load. Yeah, it's still loading. 
anyway, without opening it, um, just to explain it to you, mm -hmm. uh, this right here is nothing more than an image, but when I click on it after everything loads, uh, it normally opens up a window. And I'm using this as kind of like a gateway for, for different groups that I'm working with. So uh, the idea is to give them a starting point for their learning. So mm -hmm. every online group that I get, I, I tend to make a gateway for them, uh, which includes things like their lesson notes and uh, vocab trainers and quizzes, mm -hmm. and, you know, and things like that. And so I'm trying to incorporate these gateways uh, in, in these browser-based worlds so as to give them this, um, yeah, this virtual world component uh, to, to, to the gateway experience, so to speak. Um, mm. So, mm. Yeah, and I, I, I love this, the idea. I just I love the idea, and I think I think this is where I see things going. Um, like the app that that I'm on now with all these learners, it's a very recent thing, just in the last like ten days or something. Um, right. You know, if, if we could take those people off the app and go do something in Vertlantis, right? Yeah. You know, take the people off the app, go do something here and there, and go back to the the mobile app for yeah. all of the chatting all of the reactions, you know, all of that, then it's kind of like, right. it's, that, it's that field trip thing, right? It's yeah. that, that yeah. go into, you know, or not even just that, even just, it's like watching a movie or going to the theater or whatever, um, you know, um, but, you, you, and, and then where do you go after to talk about it? Maybe somewhere else, right? Right, right, right. And the goal with these gateways is to make, um, you know, learning as, as immediate as possible in terms of like, you know, if you feel like learning, you can jump in, you know what to do, everything's clear. So I can read an article here. I can look at some infographics here. I can, you know, check out quizzes, tests, watch some videos, study vocabulary. Mm. And if I want, you know, to be social, I, I click here and it takes me into the, the browser-based virtual world and I can connect with my classmates or my teacher and, you know, have a conversation, you know. And, uh, right. yeah. And, and then from here, the adventure can continue on mm -hmm. to other virtual environments. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. As a guided learning experience or, or as a kind of self-paced uh, or, or yeah, self-based um, exploration. Yeah, I, it, it's funny. Um, I, I don't know if I if I told you this. If we talked about it, but I had an experience where we were uh, we, we were in uh, one of the frame in, in the edu metaverse on frame uh, with with a, a school, a language school, and we sh we went with them to kind of show them all uh, these different things. So Andrew was guiding everybody around and then uh at the end of this amazing tour uh this language school the people uh representing the language school said that's great but you know where do where's the classroom where students sit down and sure sure <laughs> you know, but, but i gotta say yeah. it, it, <laughs> you know it felt it felt like it was very telling because it was like my my reaction to that was like no the whole point is that there isn't something like that yeah, you know, yeah. That this is not we're not taking them into this virtual world to sit them down in, at, a, at a desk and uh take attendance and and give them a worksheet right, <laughs> right um right. you know that can happen in in the real world um if you need it to happen you know if there's certain right. conventions certain things going on um this right this, this is again the movie, the art museum, the the adventure, the field trip. Uh, right. Uh, you know, right. it it doesn't mean everything has to happen there. Um, sure. But but uh, could it also happen there? Like, let's say you yeah, didn't yeah. have your own school in real life. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you also you know have those experiences and then kind of also just have a place where you're sort of taking care of business, so to speak? Yeah. Exactly. And that's what the, the launch room concept or idea, which, which uh, goes way back, it's an older idea, um, sort of uh, aims to address or aim to address at the time. Um, the, the, the goal was to keep it very, you know, we we're limited to a certain number of like objects on the island. So mm. the goal was to not try to be too uh, prim intensive. It is what it's called. Prims are like these individual building blocks uh, in Second Life. So you have a certain number of prims. That's true for Kitely as well. Uh, that you're limited to so it's a very kind of a slim very basic concept uh you know we put down a single a single prim object almost or just a, a object consisting of a few prims act as a surface and just uh the, the the main goal was to for it to act as kind of like a meeting point a place to come back uh with with uh with one's learners etc mm -hmm. uh to sort of uh but but it can also act as an activity location and it did ultimately so teachers chose to use them in different ways and that was interesting to to learn from Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the goal is not to in any way trap people in, in Verklantis, do you know what I mean? Or trap people on any platform. 
the, the idea is to, to, to leave the doors open, even all the windows open, if you know what I mean, so that yeah. people feel free to kind of go out and explore other environments and, um, and then come back when and if they need uh, to, to their home spot, so to speak. Um, Very cool. Very cool. Well, I want to make sure, you know, we have, we have enough time if there are things, you know, I'm sort of trying to ask you these sort of guided questions, but I'd love it now. Uh, sure. If you could just take us, tell us, take us anywhere that it's, it's really important for us to, to, to know about okay. and hear about. Well, one thing that's very important to realize is that, that when you look at a virtual environment, like this right here happens to be a classroom where I've got some dolly up on, on the wall and whatnot. Uh, this is nothing more than a, than one possible classroom environment, right? So there is more than meets the eye. This is not a static environment. This is a dynamic, dy dynamic environment. Uh, it could be changed uh, very quickly if a holodeck were, were placed here and holodeck scenes were created for this particular uh, uh, place, then you could instantaneously switch out the environment. So more than meets the eye. That's very mm. important to realize. So everything can change. You know, if I want to change the carpet here, it can, it can be switched out. So we have the ability to customize environments mm. in, in all kinds of incredible ways. Mm. And, and that's mm. true for, for, I think, all of these um, um, platforms, including uh, the, the browser-based worlds. Mm. And what, what, would be an what would be an example of an advantage of that for language learning? Um, well, I mean, it, it keeps things interesting, doesn't it? It keeps things exciting. So, for sure. uh, and, you know, and also the the ability to have theme-based experiences and theme-based environments. That's what like I was thinking doing. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe you're doing a lesson on climate change, you know. Well, I've got something here in the browser world for, for that, you know, because that's one of these mature topics that they have to focus on. So you, you create a little, I'm going the wrong way, you create a little environment for, for that topic, you know. Um, let me get there. Yeah, so here we are. This is a, a, just a little space, you know, that can be sort of allocated to, to this topic. And then within the space, you could have different types of uh, interactive objects. These, are, these happen to be audio files from a textbook. Okay. So here again, we're, here again, we're integrating textbook content, you know, with, with the virtual environment. So there's that bridge, you know, mm -hmm. from, the, from the real life classroom to this virtual space. And then from here, from, from an, an, this one little space, you, I could easily jump to other spaces and, and not only Verglantis spaces, but, um, you know, other people are also making virtual environments. So we could also connect with their environments in terms of exploring them and making use of them if they're open to the public. Yeah, how, how is that? Is that a seamless thing now? Or is that in the future where it's going to be easier just to like jump around uh, these different, different virtual worlds? Well, with, um, the browser-based stuff, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, you can, it's a, 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 just a matter of going between tabs, right? You can, I, can be, I can be here, like I'm in this world right now, but I'm also in frame. This is spatial, mm -hmm. and, and now I'm back in frame. So I, I'm in both places at the same time. The, yeah, the onboarding for, for worlds like Second Life and, and Kitely is a little bit more complex. You need an account. It's yeah. not rocket science, right? You need to download the program. You need to create an account, choose a starter yeah. avatar. Um, but there's a little bit more involved. So, but I would imagine I, I would imagine going forward, things are just going to get easier rather than harder. Definitely, and, and our aim it will not be to gate anything in any way. So we want the doors open, and mm -hmm. we want people. We, we want to help people get to these different environments and to make use of them as if they were one and the same. You yeah. Know? Um, just to quickly show you something. Please. That I've been yeah. Um, there's even the possibility of doing things like virtual within virtual. So here I'm inside frame, and I've got an object on the wall here. When I click on it, I can open it up. And so although I'm in frame, I can also go into spatial, hmm. right? So, so within one virtual world, I can go to the next virtual world. Hmm. Very cool. You see what you see? What I mean? Yeah. And that and that's pretty cool. You know. Yeah. I think. Um, the same thing can be done in Second Life. So uh, you can actually place uh, spatial or frame on, on an object. Mm -hmm. I can quickly show you. So in Second Life and also in Kitely, you have what's called web on a prim. So you basically have the ability to put a website um, on any object uh, mm -hmm. uh, very quickly and. Uh, 
So there again, you have that ability to sort of like explore another world within within Second Life or within Kitely, and that that has potential, I think. Hmm. Um, wow! I can wow! Quickly, very try very cool. To show you if you want me to. Yeah, I'll quickly do it just so it's clear. So things like this need to be explained to people, you know, so that it's uh, easier to do. And as as a beginner, you often struggle to figure things like this out, but you can see how fast of a process it is, yeah? Well, especially so, like when you're ready, like just having, inviting people yeah. and just kind of following you around and checking right. stuff out. And, and I think it's really a, a very important that you are patient and, and waiting because there's nothing worse than people, you know, being invited too early to these things and, and <laughs> not knowing what to do and the people are creating them have to say like, well, it's coming or this is coming. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's it'd be much better, obviously for people who, uh, you know, unless, unless they're people more like, like, like more like-minded who want to be in that, uh, that stage, sort of the pioneering kind of developmental stage. But I mean, the majority of people obviously just, you know, either they're going to come in and just get it quickly. I mean, of yeah. course, a bit of a learning curve uh, or they're just going to feel like alienated from it and they won't come back. Right. <laughs> so. Right. Right. That's, that's why it helps to have people that you can ask questions and, and you know, a community that that is uh, welcoming. Uh, this is true for, for all kinds of communities. I think we, we know this from I'm also interested in things like Linux and the mm -hmm. Linux community. You know, some some communities are more supportive than others. And, that's right. Um, um, well, what else? What yeah. else? What else have we not seen that you would like us to see? Ah, uh, so, <laughs> so much. I figure uh, that's why I, you know I'm thinking <laughs> if we if we if we have like you know about ten fifteen minutes, what would be uh, sort of you think most uh, again, especially language teachers, like what maybe would be like? Oh wow, this yeah. would be amazing to to do. Hmm. Well, I think um, one thing I'd like to make clear is that you know. Um, Verglantis is not all of Second Life, right? So Second Life has many different uh, islands and, and environments um, or, or sims and regions and whatnot that you can visit and make use of. Um, so it's, in many respects, um, where we are now, we're at Edunation and Verglantis has a location there. Mm -hmm. um, this is, in, in many respects, like a big launch room because we are not uh, limited to uh, doing it, carrying out activities within the space. We can go elsewhere. To other environments that might be more conducive to whatever we're, we're trying to do yeah uh, or might have the environment that we want you know because some environments do take time to to create um so so that's something to realize that you just like the internet right you don't you don't isolate yourself to one website yeah right? that's right that, that would be boring right so you explore mm. the internet and you go to all kinds of sites and, and that's true for kitely that's true for um all of these worlds really frame vr as you know um other people mm -hmm. are creating all kinds of uh, nice environments. So we can really uh, go into exploration mode together and, and at the same time upskill each other and at the same time share resources. And mm -hmm. there's no cost factor, you know, so it's just win-win all around. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what can you show us that sort of bring in, because I know from, from, from a long time ago, because you, you were showing videos, uh, you were playing music, uh, has, 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 is there anything now that's become easier with bringing media in, or is it pretty much the same still, you feel? Well, I think you are referring to um, um, Web on a Prem. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability, ability to watch YouTube videos and things like that um, um, in, in Second Life and also Kitely. Mm -hmm. um, as for these uh, browser-based worlds like Frame, I think they are working on something at the moment. Okay, but that's it's not as easy to do that. Well, you can bring in videos like I have here, but these are basically looping, and I can click, I can listen to the audio if I want to, uh, but they're basically looping videos, so it's not a, an interactive kind of a thing. But I, I think they're working on that and trying to add interactivity. Um, but um, maybe another thing to realize is that, you know, in terms of activities and events, um, you know, the Verklantis community, we will aim to, to get more activities going and and whatnot, but there are lots of other communities um, that offer, you know, different types of, of events. And uh, we've had a collaboration with a, with a community called Music Island, for example, over the years. Mm -hmm. And Music Island even had a location at Second Life, uh, I think I have a picture, uh, for a while. Um, yeah, there's one right there, right there. 
So we, we had live concerts which took place uh, uh, at Verglantis for the longest time because of the collaboration with Music Island. And I know, and um, somehow so we, we were here. planning one. It didn't work out. I don't remember why. So I definitely want to yeah. do that when the time is right. I got out. It will soon be possible, Jace. Your, your avatar is in the making. So uh, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, a question right. of time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm patient too. So no problem. But yeah, that'll be so right. much fun. I mean, wow. Right. So cool. Right. So we, we want to encourage people to, to explore and to try to um, equip them with the skills and resources that they need to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So cool. Uh, can, can, speaking of avatars, like what do, you, what do you see in the future? Do you feel like people will sort of have uh, this one avatar that they use across different platforms or you feel like they're going to have to kind of change it? Or like how, how, we haven't really talked about those. And when we've been seeing you, taking us around um are you seeing your avatar and we are not or we just don't see it or how does that work uh well you see my avatar here and second here, okay that's true yeah, yeah. Okay. you can also see my avatar in the browser-based worlds if i uh like if you show it up there. Yeah. right right so i can i can now have a look at my avatar here um yeah there's ready ready player me is um I guess it's a company, I guess you could say. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know uh, a lot about the, uh, you know, what's behind it, but um, they seem to be promoting the idea of an avatar, which you can use uh, on various platforms. And mm -hmm. recently Spatial, which Spatial used to have these avatars that were legless, which yeah. is kind of a, a strange uh, experience yeah. uh, for, <laughs> yeah. for some people, you know. Uh, they've, now, they've now started using um, Ready Player Me avatars. So you can cool. upload a picture, yeah, a picture of yourself and, and it will kind of um, yeah, create a custom avatar based on, on your actual um, physical self. And so nice. You know, I, had so the, this is, I had the experience, I mean, I, I know you had this experience you know, years and years ago, um, but for me, it was really just recent and for other people, they haven't had it yet, where I was mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, uh, on, on uh, the Edu Metaverse as an avatar, mm -hmm. meeting with people and doing stuff and you know, it was so interesting because, you know, what I was doing while all it was happening was also, you know, drinking coffee, uh, you know, filing my nails, uh, you know, like doing <laughs> stuff in my own world here. Uh, and right. it's so different from Zoom where you feel like, you know, you or something like that, right? Or, or the, the kind of traditional online classroom setting where it's, if you're going to do stuff like that, you're going to turn your camera off. And then people right. know your right. camera's off or, or you're going to have your camera on. You have to feel like you have to pose all the time mm -hmm. uh, to make mm -hmm. sure people think you're interested. It was just so liberating to have this avatar where, I, where my, my, my first feelings about an avatar would be like, it's so fake. It's not like I'm really there. And it was okay. interesting, okay. this sort of paradox, uh, <laughs> you know, that happened for me. Where it was like, God, I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm really there with my avatar and I feel like I'm really here as myself. Uh, it just right. feels so much more real than, than a freaking screen. And I, that, right. I was at that moment where I feel like I, I see how the screens are going to disappear. Like it's just so fake to have you know, my, my, right. my face on a screen. Uh, and this right. avatar thing is so, so much more real. Uh, it, when you hear someone like me talking about it, do you feel like, oh God, yeah, that was like 2008 when I had that experience? Well, uh, people relate to their avatar in many different ways. Some people even refer to their avatar in the third person as if it were something you know, else. Wow. You know, I personally have always seen it as kind of an extension, not a replacement of me, but an extension of my real life self. And I, I think that's a healthy way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, or at least that's, that's how I choose to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the avatars are getting better and better. And I, I think the avatar shouldn't necessarily be the central focus. I think the, the focus should be use of, of these worlds and sure. you know, explore, exploring these worlds and whatnot. So the, the avatar is more of an aesthetic thing. That said, it is also an important component when it comes to uh, you know, overall experience. Um, people well, do want yeah. to feel good in, in their skin, you know what I mean? Well, I can also just imagine, I mean, and actually you, you've probably had real life experience with this, whereas for me, it's just the thing I'm imagining, which is that uh, based on my experience of, of trying being an avatar for the first time, which is, I, I started to think like, you know, students who are maybe more shy to be on yeah. camera and on screen, you know, yeah. if, if they're an avatar, you know, would they participate more? Would they feel more comfortable because they don't feel like everyone's eyes are on them? And I'm thinking, well, of course, that this, this could be potentially huge 
But yeah, have you had yeah. that experience? Like you've had students? Yes. You feel, okay, tell us about that. Because I think as a language teacher oh, yeah. watching, yeah. that's that's a mm -hmm. big one. Yeah, it can be really good. Uh, you know, people react differently. So you can also experience nervousness, like if you have a presentation to do or something like that. Also, because there's so much to like um, be aware of and, and on top of, you know, when, when doing something like a virtual world uh, presentation, mm -hmm. okay, especially yeah. if you're, you're new to, to, to platforms like Second Life, etc. That said, I, I think um, the avatar... Uh, can make uh, confidence building uh, easier. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally have experienced over the years, we, we've had um, activity participants um, that, that have uh, not um, basically transitioned from participating in learning activities to offering their own mm. learning activity. And that was part of the philosophy too, was that everybody is a learner and everybody is a teacher in some way. And so we, mm -hmm. we really mm -hmm. tried, have tried over the years to encourage that idea and to... Um, basically say to everybody, look, if you want to offer your own activity, you can. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to teach your own language, you can. If you want to, if you have a skill or something that you know well yeah. and you want to teach somebody about it, you can. Um, I'm reminded of a, a student that was really into reading and he simply wanted to sit in these virtual environments and, and read with people for <laughs> pronunciation, <laughs> yeah, uh, practice and things like that. And he, he had quite a bit of success. He managed to get a circle of people who were interested in doing that and, and it worked for him. I love you know? it. Yeah, so, I can I can imagine like so many other types of just yeah. there's there's no end to what you can imagine yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, wow, really really cool. Well, we need we need to stop in a couple of minutes. Um, no problem. Yeah. yeah, no, no, but just um, you know, is, is there anything any sort of words of advice you'd have for teachers who are looking at this, thinking like, wow, this just seems cool, or how can they keep in touch with you, or what should they go maybe explore first? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I would say if you're uh, seriously interested in getting involved in um, any any of what I've shown um, and anything that we've talked about today, contact me. Um, I, I will very soon make the, the whole process a lot easier. We're going to have a kind of application process, which would be nice and simple uh, for, for people who are interested in having their own sim or region mm. in, in worlds like Kitely and Second Life. Um, that will involve a little bit more of an application process because um, it's bigger than just a launch room or a classroom. Mm -hmm. It's basically an entire, you know, uh, environment, a sim environment, and we've got about uh, 16 of those at the moment in Kitely to, uh, to basically um, say to people, okay, if you if you have an idea, um, if you want to come in and make educational use of the sim, then uh, it will be yours. You know, we'll dedicate it to to your use, um, and uh, you can simply let us know when you need support. Uh, we'll give mm -hmm. you ideas, etc. Otherwise, we'll stay out of your way, right? So, right. yeah, wow. Um, mm -hmm. Super cool, super cool. And, you know, um, I see a lot of what Kip's doing on LinkedIn, so I'd suggest checking out uh, LinkedIn, um, but also but also Facebook. The Verlantis group on Facebook is great. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, Kip, wow, so great to have you as our featured teacher for the month. Thank um, you, Jessica. Really, really appreciate it. And um, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> looking forward to, to where you're heading, uh, where we're all heading. Um, as, as, you know, using, using virtual worlds, um, again, not as like a replacement for what we're doing, but as sort of, right. I feel uh, very soon we'll feel such an obvious, uh, solution, yeah. uh, to many ways we're limited, uh, in mm -hmm. a, in a classroom environment with a textbook, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just fantastic. Th thanks for sharing everything with us today. I, I appreciate the time, Jason. Thank you too. Thanks to all of you uh, here live and all of you watching the recording. Uh, stay tuned for another edition of Featured Teachers. We'll be back again uh, in June. And, uh, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.